Hindu scriptures say, it's okay to beat and rape a woman. Killing women is a minor offense. Women are the root of evil. Prefers of son over daughter. Women are of sinful birth. Women's testimony not valid. Women are devoid of intellect. Women should not be given freedom. Women are bad luck. Women barred from studying Vedas, to perform sacrifice and to worship. Women are sex maniac. Women can't choose husband. Proud wife should be punished. If a man performs Samtapana Krikra, meaning period of fasting, then the man is free of any responsibility after impregnating a female slave. Women are equal to dogs and sudras, meaning low caste and women are also equal to untruth. Women are dumb. Women are powerless and have no inheritance. A wife without a son is a discarded wife. A higher caste man can forcefully take a low caste man's wife. Women are equal to idiots, animals and untrustworthy. All women think like whores. Widows are better off dead. And widows should be burned alive. Numerous female slaves. Pedophilia. A wife without a daughter should be abandoned. Killing women is a minor offense. God Indra gives wives and horses as booty. Damsels and female slaves as gifts. Women can be won in a dice game and enslaved. Wives are at the Lord's disposal. One thousand young virgin girls for personal services. Drugging maidens and slaughter opponents and take the maidens by force. Abduction of females is not a sin. Moon God kidnaps the Lord of Prayer's wife and rapes her and the wife gets blamed, no freedom for women. Beat women. Krishna had 16,100 junior wives along with eight major wives and Vasudeva the father of Krishna had 14 wives. Polygamy is allowed according to Hindu scriptures. This is what ancient Hindu temples are decorated in. Hindu gods are rapists themselves. God Brahma didn't even leave his daughter. Is this a godlike behavior? Is this supposed to be a religion? Let's see how to determine the nature of a woman, according to Hindu scriptures. If the palm is placed on the ground and the little finger and the ring finger do not touch the ground, she is surely a whore. Stout neck she becomes very fierce. Squint in the eyes, dark blue or tawny in the eyes, roving eyes, absence of chastity. If when she smiles two dimples are seen in the cheeks, she is surely one adulteress. If the buttocks hang down, she kills her husband. A moustache-like growth of hair above the upper lip is inauspicious for the husband. Hairy breasts are inauspicious and uneven ears too are inauspicious. And don't forget about the ritual of husbands giving their wife to gods, rishis and priests, so they can enjoy his wife and give him a son. And devdasis are just sex slaves of Hindu priests. Hinduism is the most dirty religion. Women are just sex object in this religion. There are more dirty things. After watching the video do read the articles from first three links in the description, this is what ancient Hindu temples are decorated in. Hindu gods are rapists themselves. God Brahma didn't even leave his daughter. Is this a godlike behavior? Is this supposed to be a religion? 
please avoid Hindu apologists and their mistranslated scriptures and explanations of the Hindu scriptures. They want to keep you unaware of the true face of Hinduism. Like look how they cut off the killing part here to fool you. Are you wondering why such a barbaric and idiotic religion still exist? I know you're shocked, because your media hides these from you. Well, you haven't seen anything yet. We will show you some more verses. But before that let's see some informations and some videos. After that we will show you more verses like this, don't miss it. And those verse will shock you, India, is the most dangerous place to be born as women. Over 10 million girls are killed before they are even born. Girls raped and brutalized on a moving bus. Then are thrown out of the bus. Women are drugged gang raped. Women are trapped and raped for 6 months. Women are forced into prostitution. Tourist gang raped, even in front of their husband. 5 month pregnant women get gang raped and her 14 family members are killed. Girls have to film themselves getting raped by their father, to prove that she was being raped by own father for 4 years. 20 year old girl and her 14 year old cousin get gang raped and 2 of their family members are killed by Hindu mob, just because of rumor of eating beef. 100 Kashmiri women get raped by Indian soldiers in one single night, Hindus don't even think once before raping their 8 months pregnant sister-in-law. Look at this report. Two Indian sisters sentenced to be raped and then paraded naked around the streets with their faces blackened. Hindus even rape their own mother, sister and daughter. 14 and 16 year old girls are raped and hanged. Hindu father rapes and get his own daughter pregnant. Then the daughter is punished in village. 14 year old child gets raped and hanged to death in a police station by police, and victim's family gets no justice. 14 year old girl Sonam was gang raped and killed at a police station by police. 6 year old Arman, brother of the deceased Sonam, said, we were tending to our buffalo near the police station on Friday. Constable Shurandri Pratap Singh put a rifle to my head and pushed me away and dragged my sister inside a house. Sub-Inspector VK Singh and complaint writer Ram Chandra were also with him. Arman said he peeked inside the house after the men came out and saw his sister's body on the ground. The policeman then hanged her body on a tree and left. His mother Taranam said she went to the police station looking for her children after she found their buffalo near the spot. She asked the sub-inspector about the children but he feigned ignorance. When I reached the spot in the evening, Sonam's body was still hanging from the tree. I have mentioned the names of all three policemen who raped and killed my daughter, but the police have registered cases against unidentified persons, Taranam said. Father of the victim in Tezar Ali said, We informed SHO Ravi Srivastava about my daughter's murder. Instead of sending the body for a post mortem examination, he handed it over to us asking us to return after performing the last rites. On a BBC report, Sonam's mother said, At noon, the cattle came back, but there was no sign of Sonam. So I went looking for her. For the next couple of hours, Taranam walked the narrow lanes of Nyasan village minus 150 kilometers, 100 miles, from the state capital, Lucknow, calling out Sonam's name and asking the neighbors if they had seen the girl. Her search ended at the police station, right in front of her house. I stood on a platform near the police station so I could look over the boundary wall. There I saw her kneeling on the ground, with her scarf tied around her neck and it looked like she was hanging from a tree. Attracted by her shrieks, several villagers came running, but no one had the courage to enter the police station. But I couldn't hold myself back, I had to go in, it was my daughter, says Taranam, wiping her tears with her sari. As soon as I touched her, she tumbled over. She was cold, her eyes were wide open, her teeth gritted. I started screaming and the policemen came out of their quarters. I told them, Sir, look, what has happened to my daughter? The policeman, she says, abused her. They called me names. 
they said take the body and go away. Otherwise, they said, they would throw us out. This is the heart of Delhi's backpacker district, where hundreds of tourists come every year. And it was in one of the hotels around here that the Danish woman was staying. There'll probably be though many tourists who will think it could have been them suffering this traumatic experience, where she reportedly told police that when she tried to get directions to come home, the men she'd gone to uh, reportedly attacked her and then robbed her. And now yet again, what's happened here has highlighted the whole issue of women's safety. Now campaigners say that although uh, laws have been tightened since the Delhi gang rape case of just over a year ago, there's much more attention on this issue. There still needs to be a lot more done to help women, Indian women, across the country. If you're in a place like Delhi, uh, a rape case is going to get a lot more attention. But in the rural areas where most Indians live, still women uh, have a pretty raw deal. देश में आए दिन महिलाओं के साथ बलात्कार और छेड़खानी की खबरें सुर्खियों में बनी रहती हैं जिसकी वजह से भारत आने वाली विदेशी महिलाएं असुरक्षित महसूस करती हैं इसी वजह से अब वो अपने लिए बॉडीगार्ड्स रखने लगी हैं आम नाम आपकी चॉइस के ऊपर है कई लोग कहते हैं आम गार्ड चाहिए कई लोग कहते हैं अनाम चाहिए इसका आंसर ऐसे आता है कि जो लोग बहुत बड़ी फैमिली से आते हैं वो आम गार्ड माइंड नहीं करते कई लोग बोलते हैं क्लोज प्रोटेक्शन ऑफिसर um, I feel safe during the day, but I wouldn't go out at night in India by myself. I'd go out in a big group to a, to a place I knew, but I wouldn't walk around the streets at night. Adding a fresh twist to the murder plot, India today has accessed a letter. In the letter, addressed to the embassy, Uzbek woman revealing her ordeal, claiming that she was being pushed into prostitution. It is not only a matter of murder, but it is also an international uh, sex racket that uh, forced her into this profession. And that is why she drafted her, her letter uh, back, uh, back uh, uh, 20, September, uh, September 2014 that was never sent uh, to uh, Uzbekistan embassy. In that letter, she clearly said that she has been under tremendous duress. With the cops uncovering fresh leads in sinister double killing in the capital, more skeletons are expected to tumble. This is what Nas wrote. I was told I would get a job of a nanny, but my passport was taken away and I was forced into prostitution. I was sent to different brokers. Every day, I was forced to have sexual relations with six or seven men. They took the money from a broker ten days in advance. I worked until September 15th and told them that I need to send money home for my brother's surgery. In the letter, Nas also describes the beatings she got. I wanted to go home. This is what she wrote. But she was killed and her body was burned. She was talking on phone with her mother. When she was being killed, her mother could hear her scream. Her mother immediately informed police. But police did nothing. New Delhi, Delhi is fast becoming unsafe for Uzbek women. In the last 20 days Delhi police registered two cases of rape and gang rape filed by Uzbek women. A Hindu man lured a Uzbek woman to India. After she came to India, he took away her passport and money and started living with her and raped her over a period of six months, took her as captive and raped her for six months. That Hindu man forced her into prostitution and threatened her if she tried to leave the house. Medical examination of the woman confirmed that she was raped for six months. Uzbek women was beaten and gang raped by five men. 
She had met a Hindu man named Ubafia Daf on a social networking website. She said they started dating but broke up about two weeks ago. According to police, she told police that after she broke with a new buff, he kept calling her. She told police that he harassed her the phone, demanding that she change her mind. Around 2 a.m. on Friday, a new buff and four other men arrived at the her home. A new buff and another accused Hindu man, Gaurav Basha started beating her up. She almost fell unconscious after which all five men took turns to rape her before fleeing. When she came to her senses, she saw no cloths on her body, she said. She managed to reach the hospital but did not opt for treatment as she was scared, she told police. She said she was apprehensive of approaching police, but filed a complaint after a friend convinced her. Police said they have recorded her statement and conducted a medical examination, Ex-boyfriend was arrested from her house, when he went to her again on Tuesday. Sources said the accused was unaware that she had lodged a rape case, and that police were looking for him. जब ये राष्ट्र हिंदू राष्ट्र बनेगा तो मुसलमान दो एम दर्जे का नागरिक बनेगा और जब मुसलमान दो एम दर्जे का नागरिक बनेगा तो उससे उससे वो उसके वोट देने का अधिकार छीन लिया जाएगा और जब मुसलमान वोट देने का अधिकार मुसलमान से छीन लिया जाएगा तो फिर कोई राजनीतिक पार्टी का नेता धर्म निरपेक्षता का नकली लबादा ओढ़ करके हिंदू समाज को गुमराह करने वाला कोई भी राजनेता हिंदुओं को गुमराह नहीं कर पाएगा हिंदुओं के सैनिकरण के सिद्धांत को योगी आदित्यनाथ अम्बली जामा पहना रहे हैं आज इस क्षेत्र में हिंदू युवा वाहिनी के लोग खुलेआम हथियार लेकर दहशत फैलाते देखे जा सकते हैं The cluttered crush of some. The cluttered crush of suburban Delhi, its rooftop lines strung with vibrant, freshly washed saris, conceals its dark, squalid secret. This city is the rape capital of India. Here, women live in fear of sexual violence so extreme and so common that one shudders to think what each new day's headlines will bring. Gang rape, acid attacks, murder by poison, strangulation or fire and most of the predators just get away with it. In Delhi's outskirts, an urban village where, one night in March, a family's rooftop terrace was the scene of a frenzied attack. A young local man broke into the house, seized, raped and then violently murdered a 15-year-old girl he'd allegedly been stalking for months. The girl's parents cannot bring themselves to even use the word rape. Their lives, they say, have been totally destroyed. Her mother heard screaming at 2.30 a.m. After the rape came a killing. He killed my daughter without any mercy. He killed my daughter torturously. He attacked her with a knife here. He slashed her leg. He hit her on the head from behind with a brick and everything came out. It was merciless. Mummy, she screamed. He's burned me alive. Mummy, he threw kerosene on me. Mummy, my head is bleeding. 
मम्मी मेरा सर से खून निकल रहा है। The teenage girl died two days later. She had burns to 90% of her body. और I had so many hopes for my child. She used to say, Dad, I'm going to study this and become this or that. She had so many aspirations. She wanted to be a doctor. She would tell us her dreams. We keep remembering these things while we're eating, while we're sleeping, when we're just sitting down, when it's school time. The official statistics reveal that across India, a woman is raped every 15 minutes. Around 40,000 rapes a year are reported, but such is the stigma that most are thought to go unreported. India, some jest, is the world's largest hypocrisy because for all the soul-searching over Jyoti Singh's rape and murder, this is a nation addicted to lavish and overtly sexual Bollywood movies, many of which stand accused of casting women as glamorous accessories and perpetuating what they call here rape culture. A woman named Bilky Spano. She was gang raped while fleeing the post Godra riots with her family. They were waylaid by a Hindu mob who then gang raped the five months pregnant Bano and killed 14 members of her family. Bano's three year old daughter was among those killed. Five Hindu policemen and two doctors off tried to save those rapists from justice. An 18-year-old girl was forced to film her own Hindu father raping her in the hope her mother would believe her and it would lead to his arrest. Sarita Devi, from Jalan district of Uttar Pradesh, in northern India, had to film her father raping her on her phone after suffering his attacks for over four years. Sarita claimed her mother and older sister never believed her when she told them her father had been sexually assaulting her. Sarita said, my father has been sexually assaulting me for four years. I always tried talking to my family about it but no one believed me. I did not have any proof. I collected the proof this time for myself to be able to raise my voice against my father. I made the video clip on a mobile phone. I am ashamed to have a father like him. I demand he is punished for exploiting me for so many years. I don't want him hanged but publicly killed and beaten by the general public so that he realizes how it feels to be tortured. I am relieved the truth is out. I am happy it is over. I now want to see my father punished for what he did and try to get on with my life. Well, this is a shocker coming in from Gopal village near Satara, Maharashtra. A 14-year-old girl was raped by her father for four months, resulting in the girl getting pregnant. When the news spread, the local panchayat directed that the father and daughter be punished by tying them up and lashing them with ten times each. The innocent girl was pushed, punished in fact, for not protesting against her father's action. You know, Rahul, that's the tragedy of it all. When you look at it, uh, this poor child, she's at best 13 years old, pregnant because her father raped her and then uh, lashed because the panchayat deems fit that she needs to pay penance for her father's crimes. Uh, very, very unfortunate, shocking, and uh, uh, you know, completely unacceptable uh, circumstance. Uh, this is a serious offence which should be looked into immediately. Exemplary punishment should be uh, 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 sought in this kind of a matter, and uh, uh, example should be set to right. the society that such crimes will not be tolerated. Uh, this is a serious law uh, the issue of law. And uh, I think the state government should take immediate action right. to initiate appropriate procedures. You know, that's why, you know, Shainan, that's why, you know, uh, maybe people like you come in because, you know, somebody needs to take initiative on this because the crime of rape is separate. You know, what's in fact shocking is that the panchayat could go ahead and feel that they could get away with a punishment such as this. By the way, rape is not a crime in Hinduism. Hindu gods are rapists themselves and Hindu god Brahma raped his own daughter. Hinduism encourages rape and prostitution. Let's look at what Hinduism say about rape.
Days before the Haryana police began collecting biryani samples in the Mewat area of Haryana to see if they contained beef, two women in the same area were gang raped and there are now allegations that the people who attacked them and murdered two family members are gaurakshaks, cow vigilantes. The Haryana government has handed over the case to the CBI. <laughs> The allegation comes two weeks after the assailants barged into their home in Mewat, killing two relatives and then taking turns to rape her and her 14-year-old cousin. This seems to have been a pre-planned attack. The assailants, four of whom have been arrested by the police, came in the night around 1 o'clock. They came to the victim's house. And most of them were out sleeping in the fields. In fact, on these cots, they tied several of these relatives to their cots, beating two of them who finally succumbed from the injuries and then took turns to rape two cousins one by one. The police has arrested four young men from the same village, all friends and allegedly known troublemakers.
औरतों के साथ में कैसा हुआ है जल चुके मर चुके जो बचना चाहते आग में से निकलना चाहते तो निकल निकल के भाग रहे तो सारी भेज देते करिए बराबर कोई ने मुंह बंद कर लिया कोई ने नारे तोड़ दिया कोई ने कुछ करा इन उनके साथ कोसर नाम की टोकरी हमारे साथ खड़ी तो वो तो भाई बहन जैसा भी उसका पेट फाड़ के बच्चा तलवार से लिया जाता है ये भगवान औरतों की तो यहाँ पे तीन लेडीज की तो हमारे हाथों से हमने हमारे हाथों से नाल काटी है नाल काटी जो पेगमेंट थी ना बच्चा भी साथ में लेडीज भी साथ में नाल हमारे हाथों से काटी है बच्चे भी मरे हाँ मत बात करो आप मेरी बात सुनो वो लेडीज की आप बात ही मत करो कहने का मतलब क्या जो उनके जिसम को पे भी आप नाखून के ना उसके घाव देखो तुम्हारे खुद हैरत में पड़ रहा क्योंकि लेडीज के सीना हो गए ना सीने को पे भी आप घाव देखो तो तुम्हारी अक्कल काम नहीं करेगी पेट्रोल के अरसिन डाल के उसने उस लोगों ने जला दिया हमारे आदमी को फिर हम छोटे छोटे बच्चों को लेकर भागे वहाँ से भागी और नदी में उतर के हमको पकड़ लिया मेरे मुझे पकड़ लिया और सब मेरी जीत से टाइम चले गए हम छुट्टी छुट्टी पड़ गए वो वहाँ से मेरी कपड़े उसको निकाल दिए थे कपड़े निकाल लिए थे और मैं फिर बेहोश हो गई छाती का भी गाड़ी छोकर करते थे छोकर हाथ जल मरी गये मतलब ये अमर तो हाथ जल मरी गये अमर क्यों छोड़ हाल करी थे छोकर करो जो मुंह पाला जोर जो थी के जो इज्जत लूटो जो जो जानी इज्जत लूटी लूट बच्चे लेट्स टेक लुक एट दिस हॉरिफिक रिपोर्ट बिफोर वी मूव ऑन A mother so shattered that she stabbed her daughter to death before slitting her own wrist. Sakshi caught her husband raping their 7-year-old daughter and had him arrested. Then relatives started harassing Sakshi for going to the police and she snapped. <laughs> Sakshi now faces charges of murder, attempted suicide, and a life mourning her child. In Bangalore, a three-year-old allegedly raped by her own father waits for justice. It took days for the police to even get their act together and arrest Pascal Mazurier, a French embassy official. The victim, who's less than four years of age, is being treated mentally and medically. The mother is hoping that she could be out of trauma soon to be able to get back to school. The Bangalore police, which was criticised first for dealing the arrest of Pascal Mazuria and then received an insensitive investigation, is now awaiting forensic reports from a DNA laboratory. The investigation, traumatic for the child, who told the police she loved her father, and the ordeal for her mother, Suja Jones, who was treated like an accused and asked embarrassing questions. Were you sexually abused as a child? How was your sexual relationship with your husband? How many times have you lied to Pascal to go see lovers? How did you go to outsiders with your household problem? Amid reports that she is under pressure to withdraw her case, the mother has, in an open letter, asked the media to project her husband humanely and not as a monster dad. Will her flip-flop weaken the case? In Delhi, a 15-year-old was repeatedly raped and beaten by her father, a petty criminal, for two years. When she tried to resist him, he stabbed her. Her mother left and remarried. Two months ago, her father walked out of another jail stint and attacked her and her aunt. She felt safe only when her father was arrested again. Vinod had been repeatedly raping his own daughter for over two years. He even attacked his wife with hot knives when she stood in the way. Children being attacked, raped in their own home, meant to be their safest refuge. Incest, India's darkest secret. hidden in these shadowy lanes of the capital perhaps many homes across the country now here the big story is the thousands affected by floods 
But sadly, here's what many of the politicians of the state are actually obsessed with. The second marriage of a Congress MLA to a man from another religion, the couple, the MLA Rumi Nath is pregnant, were brutally beaten by a mob this weekend. Communal tension is high in parts of Assam, and because of this, the couple are now in Guwahati. They're virtually under house arrest in the MLA's hostel. The larger question, what does this incident say about our religious intolerance and the worst kind of politics possible in Assam at a time when the focus should be in the huge natural disaster in the state? Well, joining me tonight on that, I'm joined, I'm joined by the Congress MLA from Assam. Uh, Rumi Nath joins me, as does her husband, Jaki Jafir. husband and wife. His name is Ram Prashad and he is 55 years old. She is Goma Devi and she is 52 years old. Suddenly, one day, Goma was dead. After a few months, Ram Parshad weds Siti Devi. She is the new wife of Ram Parshad. She is 23 years old and 27 years younger than her husband. After five years, Ram Parshad dies. baby. As per the sati system, women have to emulate herself on her husband's funeral pyre. So alive, Siti Devi keeps in the pyre with her husband's corpse, put the fire on the pyre. After a minute, she is unable to tolerate the fire. She starts crying and begging for help for the sake of her baby, but no one helps her. After, she seeks to escape from the pyre. But people hit her with stones and with woods. Then they broke her hands, her legs. And throw her on the fire. After a few minutes, she becomes ashes. 